just the voices. Come on, y'all. Take your neighbor by the hand. Let's pray. Glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart. Was the blood of life, Lord? Oh, 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 Singing glory to His name. Oh, that to my heart was the blood Oh. you long, but I know what it was. Oh, Lord. Glory to His name. I'm singing glory. Hallelujah. Oh, oh. To my black heart was his red blood applied for it. All I can do is say, Glory to his name. I wish I had some help. Who can remember where you were? Who remember how messed up you were? And who remember how unworthy you were? And how God stepped in and sent his son to die on your behalf. And you're so grateful. All you can do is just say, oh, glory to his name. Somebody that really felt that. I, I promise I don't mean to hold you long. I promise I'm trying to get you out of here. But when I think about where I was and I think about how God found me and saved my soul, when I think about what a wretch I was and how He took my black sins and put it in His red blood and Made me whiter than snow. All I can do is say, Glory to His name. Precious name. All I can do is say, Glory to His name. Oh. Oh, 
Can we just worship? Just waiting on the Lord to do what he needs to do. I'm waiting on the Lord to move. The mature worshiper know what you need to do now. Running, 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 running. 
running to to the draw me draw me Lord I'll come running to you if you us now, God. We thank you. We feel you in the presence. I pray now, God, as we go forward and share your word with this, your people, I pray that you allow us to hear you clearly today. I pray, God, that those who already received their word, those who are getting their breakthrough even now, help them now, God, not to break down before the breakthrough, but give them strength, give them stamina. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and take your seat. I know you've been standing for a while. Go ahead and take your seat. As the music just play that chant, I want to just give him, amen, God, just another minute or two to move what he's going to do. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, God. Draw me nearer. Nero, blessed Lord, unto that precious, hallelujah, yes God, to thy precious, bleeding side, play it again, I am thine, O oh Lord, I am thine, O oh Lord. I've heard thy voice and it talk thy love to thee. Thank you, Lord, but I long to rise arms of I thank God for my pastors and our ministers who are here today, and I thank God for the presence of the Spirit in this place, and Sister Jackson and other pastors and ministers' wives who are here, and members of our diaconate ministry, and each of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, there's a word I want to share uh, with you today, and, and um, I, I don't mind taking a back seat to the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But there's a word I want to quickly just share. I just want to deposit in your spirit. And if I didn't feel that this word was just so needful uh, for someone today, uh, we just would have worshiped our way on out of here. But I want to uh, just share this word. And as you're uh, opening your Bible, um, it's uh, Luke uh, 1, uh, verse 5 through uh, 13. And the Bible says, There was in the days of Herod, Reading from the King James Version, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the chorus of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous. They were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord and blameless. However, verse 7 says they had no children because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were well now stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the Bible says in verse 10 that the multitude of people were praying on the outside 
at the time of the incense. And while he was worshiping on the inside and the people were praying on the outside, verse 11 says, and there appeared an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Thus ending the reading of the word of God for the day. I want to preach today with your prayers, needing God's power um, from these words, when God makes a promise. That's what I want to talk about, the promises of God today, when God makes a promise. Repeat that with me. If you can just turn to your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, neighbor when, God when God makes you a promise. Let's give God praise in this place. I want to get right into the text for the essence of, of time, when God makes you a promise. Th this, my brothers and sisters, us as you may be seated, is a very uh, interesting passage of scripture. It it opens in verse 5 with Luke, uh, the penman of this particular passage of scripture, making an interesting um, comparison in characters. He mentions two individuals in the same verse who are polar opposites. Uh, he mentions two individuals in verse 5 that could not be more different. Uh, he mentions a potentate named Herod and a priest named Zacharias. And it's interesting how Luke pictures and he shows these two individuals, these two individuals of uh, diverse backgrounds. And he places them side by side in not only the same chapter, but he places them side by side in the same verse. We read about Herod and Zechariah, both in the same verse and on the surface of this particular text one may wonder why would a person of Luke's intellect um, put two men who could not be further apart spiritually speaking beside each other in the same verse it it appears by looking uh, on this particular passage of scripture on the surface of it that Luke would have put them in different verses but Upon close scrutiny of the text, I, I kind of understand what Luke is trying to do. He is trying to reveal to us the character and the genius of God. Because what Luke is doing by putting Zechariah and Herod in the same verse is showing us that even in an environment wherein it appears as if unrighteousness or there is wickedness on the throne, God still has a righteous presence. Even in the midst where there's a ruling wickedness, God still has a righteous witness. That, that's significant because even in the midst of an environment where it appears as if evil is on the scene, God will still have a presence for he is never left without a witness. That's so significant, my brothers and my sisters, that you understand that God is never left without a witness. Because when it comes down to Herod, uh, there was no person that was any more wicked than Herod. And you Bible readers know that this same Herod was sitting on the throne during the birth of Jesus Christ. And for those who are taking notes, you can go back and read the Gospel of Matthew around chapter number two to discover how evil and wicked Herod really was. It was this same Herod that asked the wise man to bring them knowledge of where Jesus was so he can quote unquote go worship the baby. And it is the same Herod in chapter two of Matthew around verse 13 through 16 that when he discovered that he had been deceived by the wise man made up his mind to kill all of the boys two years old and younger throughout the land it, it is this same Herod that was so wicked that history records that him being so insecure 
and that he would not only kill his enemies, he would even kill his family. The record states that Herod was so insecure that somebody would raise up and take his seat on the throne, that he killed his wife, killed his own children, killed the entire Sanhedrin council, killed every wise, noble person that lived in the area. He, 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 he was so insecure that this bloodthirsty tyrant named Herod uh, would execute anyone that he felt was a threat. However, the Bible says in verse 5 that during the time when Herod lived, so lived Zechariah. That's significant because no matter how evil a presence you may be confronted with on your job, this verse tells us that God will always have at least one righteous witness because this text tells us already that God is never left without a witness. In fact, just reassure your neighbor. Tell the neighbor you're not by yourself. Oh no, God will never leave you by yourself. That was uh, Elijah's problem sitting underneath that juniper tree when, uh, when he discovered that Baal uh, and Jezebel had killed the prophets. He, he, he felt that he was the only one and God had to remind him that he had hundreds of prophets that hadn't even bowed down to Jezebel. Je je just reminding him that, that you're not by yourself, that God is never left. Repeat that with me. Say, he's never left without a witness and so Zachariah we are introduced to him can I just take my time and preach this morning we are introduced to him in verse number five and when you keep reading um, this narrative and forget about Herod there are two things that jump out of the text and will arrest your attention as it relates to Zachariah the first in verse six is that we see how devoted to God Zacharias was. For those taking notes, write devotion to God. He was devoted to God. And when you look closely uh, at verse number six, uh, we see a description of his devotion to God. Three things, verse six um, suggests about his devotion. Verse six suggests that number one, his witness was righteous. The text says about him and his wife that both of them were righteous before God. P -p please don't omit that. Please don't overlook that as I unpack the text because the text says that both of them were righteous before God. But bo both not just Zacharias, but Elizabeth. Not just Elizabeth, but Zachariah, not, not just one of them, but the reason why their household was blessed was because uh, both of them, the man and the woman, the husband and uh, the wife, the male and, y'all ain't feeling me yet, the female, both of them had a righteous witness. It's not good enough for you to be righteous. It's not good enough for you to know, to know God and for you um, to love God. But you got to hook up with somebody that, help me preach somebody, that, that love God. You have to hook up with somebody. When, when you look at their lineage, uh, she was a daughter of, of, of Aaron. He was a priest. But, but both of these individuals had a righteous witness because the Bible says that they stood before the law everybody can't have that testimony that that's not everybody's uh, story it, it takes a special person to be able to stand before God righteously in fact the psalmist asked the question in Psalms 24 verse 3 and 4 who can ascend until the hills of the Lord or who can stand uh, before him in his holy place and the answer came back in verse 4 only the person with a clean heart a pure hard and clean hands that 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 was Zachariah's uh, testimony the Bible says uh, his witness was so strong that he was able uh, to stand uh, before the Lord but not only was his uh, witness righteous uh, his walk was also righteous look at the text uh, it says that he walked in all the commandments and ordinances of uh, the Lord can the church say a righteous walk 
Zacharias had, let me teach this morning, a righteous walk. He had a righteous witness, but to go along with his righteous witness, he also had a righteous walk. I, I, I thank God that he had a righteous witness, but I also thank God that his walk lined up with his witness that it's one thing uh, to talk about salvation to talk about holiness to talk about righteousness to talk about holiness but it's another thing when your walk can match your talk y'all ain't helping me it's it, it's it's one thing uh, to lip the salvation but it's another thing when your life lines up with your yeah, lips. Here is Zachariah. There was no deviation between his lips and his life. His walk matched his talk. He talked the talk and Zach walked the walk. Help, can I preach like I feel it today? Uh, we, 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 we see his devotion to God. He, he had a righteous witness. He also had, watch this, a righteous walk. But then verse 6 says that, that his work was righteous because it was a blameless. Can the church just say blameless? What an awesome word that blameless is. In fact, it's the same word that Paul used in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, to describe the character of bishops. It's the same word, deacons and deaconesses, that Paul used in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10, to describe the character of the diaconate. It is the same word that Paul used in Titus chapter 1, verse 6, to describe the character of of the elders look at uh, the bible it, it profiles zacharias uh, he had a righteous witness watch this he had righteous walk he had righteous works and he did it because he loved god he he did it because watch this he was uh, devoted to god your love for christ all the control of your character your your love for christ your affection for God ought to affect your behavior. There's some stuff you ought not do just because you love the Lord. I ain't got no help. Uh, well, let me put it this way. Paul says, for the love of Christ constraineth us. In other words, there's some stuff that I would do that I can't do because I'm so in love with God. There's some places I could go, but I don't go because I'm so in love with God. I'm coming to Get you. There's some clothes that I could wear, but I won't wear because I'm so in love for God. Let me come get you. There's some words I would say, but I can't say because I'm so in love for God. I'm not cussing you out when you cuss me out, not because you don't deserve to be cussed out or because I forgot how to cuss, but I'm not going to cuss you out when you cuss me out because I got the Holy Ghost controlling my tongue. It's something on the inside that won't let some come out on the outside he, he, he's devoted can the church say devoted I feel like preaching today. His devotion to God. He was, verse 6, he was devoted to God. However, as devoted to God he was in verse 6. Verse 7 lets us know he was disappointed with God. He was disappointed with God. His, his, disappointed, his disappointment, rather, is evident in the fact, Richard, that he had no children. The Bible says in verse 7, as you look at the screen and as you look at your Bible, the Bible says in verse 7 that he and Elizabeth had no children because Elizabeth was, watch this, barren. And the Bible also said that both of them were well stricken in age. Look at his disappointment. Don, his disappointment is evident in the fact that he was missing a seed. He had no children. And when you study the contextual cultural background of the narrative you'll discover that during this day not to have children were looked at as missing the favor of God if a young man has no children now or if a young woman has no children now you're not frowned on by society if you have no children women you're not looked 
at as less of a, a woman. If a young man has no children with his wife, that's no ground to divorce your wife. However, in this day, if a woman had no children, she was looked at as less of a, a woman. If a person had no children, they were thought to have the absence of favor on their life. And this situation with Zacharias is as such that he was missing a seed. But on top of missing a seed, he had missed his season because he is old and his wife is old. Therefore, when you look at verse number seven, brothers and sisters, we can clearly see how disappointed Zachariah must have been with God. But can I tell you, brother Bernard, what shouts me about the text? What shouts me, Dave, is this. Even though he's disappointed with God, his disappointment with God does not affect his devotion to God. He is still faithful to God. He don't have any children, but he still love God. He's, he, he's missing the favor of God, but the absence of favor does not stop the presence of faithfulness. He is not serving God because of, but he is serving God in spite of. He is not serving God because God has blessed him with children, but he is serving God in spite of not having children. Come and let me talk to somebody. The difference between Zachariah and many of us today is this. We serve God because because we're trying to secure from God. Most of our faithfulness is based on his favor. But God is looking for somebody who can tell him, listen, if you never bless me again, if you never open another door, if you never heal my body, if you don't fix my relationship, if you don't dry my eyes, if you don't step in and turn things around, I'm going to serve you because my faithfulness is not based on your favor. I praise you because I recognize how awesome you are in my life and I wish there was somebody in this church today who made up in your mind that your faithfulness to God is not based on whether or not he blesses you. That your praise to God is not based on whether or not he hooks you up with the job. But you are so grateful that just the fact that he woke you up this morning. You came to church with a made up mind to give God uh, the very best praise that you could However, my brothers and my sisters, here it is. Here it is in this narrative. Uh, Zachariah, he continues uh, to serve. Tell your neighbor, he keeps on serving. He, oh, talk to him. Tell him, he keeps on serving. He, he, he serves. He, watch this. He serves uh, even with a spirit of, of sorrow because he does not let the fact that he has no siblings uh, stop him uh, from serving. He continues uh, to serve. Verse 9 says when it was Zachariah, I'm going somewhere when it was Zachariah's time Leroy to go into the temple to serve, he walks up into the temple, it was his lot he walks into the temple and the Bible says watch this, he starts burning incense please don't miss this, he starts burning incense in the temple, his job was not to pray. His job, watch this, was uh, to burn incense. He's not in there petitioning from God. He is in the temple, Gloria, burning uh, incense. Verse 10 says, the people are outside the temple and the people are praying on the outside. But watch this, Zechariah is on the inside uh, burning incense. Can the church say burning incense? I'm going to come back and get that in a minute. He's burning incense. His job, watch this, was not to pray. His job was to set the atmosphere. Watch this. As he is setting the atmosphere on the inside and the people are praying on the outside. The Bible says in verse 11, all of a sudden an angel shows up. Listen, you missed your chance to shout because here it is. The angel did not show up until the atmosphere 
atmosphere was set on the inside and the people were praying on the outside because the people were praying on the outside and the atmosphere was set on the inside. Verse 11 says, the, I'm going to try it one more time. The angel did not show up until the atmosphere was set on the inside and the people started praying on the outside. Can I tell y'all what will happen if y'all ever made up in your mind that before you get to church you're going to get prayed up and when you come to church the atmosphere is already set because if the priest set the atmosphere in the church and the people pray before you get to church when you come together God will show up and I don't know who I'm talking to today but somebody came to church hoping that the Lord will show up somebody been walking some floors somebody been catching some hell somebody's bills are behind so you didn't come in here to catch a number you didn't come in here to get a date you didn't come in here to see the latest fashion you didn't come in here to see who's sleeping with who you came in here hoping to have a collision with his glory you came in here because you need the Lord to show up and if I'm talking to you turn to your neighbor and tell them neighbor the preacher's talking to me because you don't know what I'm going through I need God to show up I need God to manifest himself I need God to show up in my situation I'm trying to hurry I'm trying to hurry but, but here it is watch this the angel the angel watch this the angel shows up. Here it is. Watch this. Zacharias, I'm going somewhere. Zacharias, I'm in verse 13. Zacharias is burning incense and the angel shows up. And Zacharias, in verse 13, here's the angel says these words. Watch this. The angel says, listen, God has heard your prayer and your wife, watch this, shall bear the a son. Can I read it one more time? The angel Marcia shows up and the angel to me says these words. Listen, your prayer has been heard and your wife Elizabeth shall, can the church just shout shall, shall bear a child. Now before I even explain this, let me suggest, I'm putting the pause in the sermon, that there are some words in the Bible that when you read in your study, certain words ought to drive you crazy. I, I, mean, I, I mean, when you're studying the word of God and when you run across some words in the Bible, some words you ought to just underline and circle, put a red leather around because there are certain words in the Bible that you read are words that ought to make you go berserk for God. And one of those words is the word shout whenever you see the word shall in the Bible, whenever God uses the word shall that's the time you stop what you're doing drop the pot, drop the mop help me somebody, pull over to the side of the road, hang up the phone because whenever God uses a word like shall that means it's just a matter of, I ain't got no help, let me see if I can help you, like Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, when the Lord says seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these righteousness and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you kind of like Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 when the Lord says ask and it shall be given unto you seek and you shall find knock and the door kind of like John chapter 11 verse 25 when Martha and Mary came to Jesus crying because Lazarus had died and Jesus looked that girl in the face and said listen uh, 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 he that believeth in me though he would dead yet shall he live and he that liveth and died shall live again kind of like in John chapter 15 verse 7 when Jesus says if you abide in me and my word abide in you you shall ask what you want and it shall be I ain't got no help somebody in the building today the reason why you're praising God your shout is because you brought a shall in your pocket you ain't got no all you got is a shall you ain't got much credit but you got a shell. You ain't got a big house, but you got a shell. You ain't got a nice car, but you got a shell. You ain't got a husband yet, but you got a shell. You ain't got a wife yet, but you got a shell. You ain't healed yet, but you got a shell. So your shout is based on the shell. You ain't got it yet, but you know it's just a matter of time before God shall give it to you. And if I'm talking to you, can you put your hands together and give God a shell prayer? Hey. 
Folk think you heal, you ain't healed. Folk think you gathered, you ain't gathered. Folk think you done blowed up, you ain't blowed up yet. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, this is a shall praise. This is a shall shout. This is a shall dance. This is a shall hallelujah. I praise God because God gave me a shall. Sit down, sit down. And so, I'm in verse 13. The angel, God, I feel my... I'm trying to get y'all out of here. But I double dare you to think about the last shell God gave you. I'm trying to get you, I promise, I'm trying to get... I'm, I promise, I, pro I promise I'm trying to get y'all out of here. But I double dare you, I triple dare you, I double dog dare you to close your eyes and think about the last shall God gave it to you. I, I, I double dare you because I double dare you because I believe with all of my heart. If you think about the last shall God gave you and you know his shall shall come to pass, that God shall deliver on the shall, that God shall manifest the shall, that y'all shall hook you up on the shall, I double dare you to give God praise and praise not because you got it but because you got a shell in your pocket and when God gives you a shell you can hold your head up stick your chest out because you know it's just a matter of hey one more time hey, hey. one more time Give me one more time. And so. And so, the angel, verse 13, said, fear not, because your wife shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. So when the angel tells Zechariah that Elizabeth shall have a son, the angel is making Zechariah a promise. Tell someone close, it's a promise. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a promise. It's a promise. It's, it's, it's a promise. It's a promise. Now, now, here is my message. Because as I looked at this text, I learned something, Joni, you got to hear me. I learned something earnest about the promises of God. And I wanted to share this today because I believe that there are those of us in the building that God has made us some promises. And, 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 and I learned, Jackie, I, I learned something about the promises of God. By reading how Sylvia, God promised Zechariah. And, and the first thing that I learned, Sister Howard, about the promises of God. Y'all got to catch this. I, I, I learned that 
Though his promises are delayed, they're not denied. Someone should have just, someone should have just lost it before I even explained it. I, the, the, the first thing that this text teaches us is that when it comes to God's promises, sometimes he delays them, but he never denies them. Let, let me show it to you in the text. I, I promise I'm going to get out of here. But, but in verse 13, the angel, watch this, the angel shows up, Sister Gray, and the angel tells Zachariah, y'all got to catch this, the angel says, put it on the screen, your prayer has been heard. Now, I told y'all that Zacharias is in the temple, but he ain't praying. He is there doing what? Come on, talk to me. I told y'all. He, he is in there lighting incense. Prayer is going on, but he ain't praying. The people on the outside praying. So, 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 so Glenn, he's in the temple, but he's not in the temple praying. He is in the temple setting the atmosphere. He is in the temple lighting incense. But the angel says, your prayer has been heard. Now, the question is this. If Zachariah is not in there praying, but setting the atmosphere, but the angel said, your prayer has been heard, the question is, angel uh, what prayer are you talking about and the revelation is uh, the angel is not talking about a present prayer but a previous prayer keep in mind Hannah that Zachariah is not praying for a child because he's already old and his wife is old but what the text teaches us is this uh, that God has heard your prayers from last year God has heard your prayers from last month and when God bless you today it's not because you pray today but God told me to tell you uh, if I made you a promise uh, though you ain't got it yet uh, don't you think I'm not going to give it to you because sometimes uh, I delay them uh, just to check and see how bad do you still want it uh, can I talk to somebody in this house uh, I will delay your promise uh, to see if you can still stay disciplined uh, still stay devoted uh, still stay dedicated uh, every promise delayed uh, is not a promise denied And I'll double dare you right now just to turn to your neighbor, look him in the face uh, and says, neighbor, it ain't denied. It ain't denied. Oh, tell him, it ain't denied. I know you ain't got it yet, uh, but it is not denied. I know you may have been turned down, uh, but don't look at the turn down as a turn down. Uh, look at the turn down as a delay. It's just a delay. It's just a delay. Help me, somebody. But you got to recognize by faith uh, that though he delayed it, uh, he's not denied. In fact, uh, Habakkuk says, uh, though the vision tarry it still shall come to pass and I need somebody in faith who can say pastor I still believe I'm going to get it I still believe he's going to raise me up I still believe he's going to hook me up I still believe it's just a matter of time sit down sit down I'm trying to get you out of here watch this he shows up. He said, listen, God, God, your, your prayer has been heard. Wait a minute. You, you, you mean the prayer I prayed 20 years ago? <laughs> wait, wait a minute. You, 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 you mean the prayer I prayed when me and Lizzie first started dating? You mean... Y'all ain't feeling me. The prayer I prayed when my hair was still black. You mean the prayer I prayed when I was still virile and strong? Help me, somebody. You, you mean the prayer I prayed 20, 30? Yes, God says that prayer. Because guess what? There's no stature of limitations when it comes down to God. I can bless you in any season and bless you with any reason. It ought to be somebody in this house who can give God crazy praise because you know there's no stature of limitations on your promise. If God told you as a child, he's going to raise you up. Keep looking for the blessing. If God told you when you were a baby, he was going to bless you, keep looking for the blessing. I 
feel like quitting right now, but let me, let me be true to the text and, and, and let me share with you the second thing I, I learned about the promises of God. The second thing, watch this, I learned about the promises of God. Number one, that delay does not mean denial. You got that? Second thing I learned is this, that doubting them leads to discipline. I know I was going to lose my amens there. Watch this. Verse 18, Zechariah, verse 18, Zechariah said, wait, wait, wait a minute. Um, um, wait a minute. Gabe, um, um, you, you Elizabeth is going to have a baby. He said, wait a minute. I'm old. And she's old. Biologically, this is an impossibility. How, 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 how can this thing be? I, 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 physically, you know, bi biologically, I, I, I got good intent. Okay, you get that. You get that. I, I, okay, I'll, I'll keep it. I, I, she gave me the look. I'll, I'll tone down. This ain't, hey, okay, okay, I'm see if I can help you. I got I to gotta, I gotta say I can help you. I can't say what I want to say because she's giving me the eye. Put it this way. Um, 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 okay, okay. Um, a dead battery uh, hooked up to a new battery uh, can, can start an engine. Uh -huh, uh, but, but a dead battery. Uh -huh. uh, hooked up to another yeah, yeah. dead battery can't bust a grape uh, uh, am I okay uh, uh. Zach, Zachariah says my battery is dead yeah and, and, and I'm hooked up help me somebody to another dead y'all ain't helping me preach and and, 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 and so how, how, how can this happen? Because I, I, I can't get the job done and, and, and she can't get the job done. Uh, however, can I tell you, with God, nothing plus nothing can equal something because uh, God don't need you to bless you. I'm talking to somebody right now who's a living witness who can recall times when God bless you apart from you. You ain't add nothing to the equation and God still bless you. You ain't bring nothing to the table. You ain't give God nothing to work with and God still bless you. I know you don't want to admit it. You want your friends to think God has always blessed you because you've always given God something to work with. But you ought to tell the truth and shame the devil. There's been times in your life when you ain't give God jack to work with and God still bless you anyway because when God want to see you blessed he can bless you apart from you and the Bible says let me hurry and the Bible says when you read this story when you get home because Zachariah doubted God God shut up his mouth oh God what is the significance of God shutting up his mouth? My brothers and sisters, if you can't talk, you can't testify. So because he doubted, he was robbed of the ability to tell of the good things that God was getting ready to do in his life. Can I suggest to somebody in this house, I don't care how long you have been waiting, but you can't doubt. I don't care how long God has delayed. You have to keep believing that God is going to come through. And just because you may be sitting beside a doubter, I want to deputize you to speak to the doubter that you may be sitting beside. So as I deputize you to speak prophetically, turn to somebody next to you and just tell them neighbor you can't doubt God because God can use you in spite of you you can't doubt God because God can bless 
bless you in spite of your inabilities. You've got to keep trusting God. In fact, stop hanging around people that are doubters. Stop associating with people that are doubters. Stop calling people that are doubters. You get some faith fellows. You get some partners in the faith that believe that God can do the impossible. Get some people in your life that when you tell them what you think God is going to do for you, they partner in faith with you. Zachariah doubted God. As a result of him doubting God, he was disciplined by God. I don't want to be disciplined based on my doubt. I don't want God to punish me based on lack of faith. So I've already made up in my mind, Mother Washington, I'm going to just trust God. It ain't my job to figure out how. <laughs> Preach, boy. It's my job just to trust that he will. It ain't my job to wonder, God, how you're going to use me and how you're going to use the situation. It's my job just to believe, God, if you said it, that settles it whether I believe it or not. I got to trust God. This text teaches us, number one, as I hasten to my close, that the promises of God, though delayed, are not denied. Secondly, the promises of God will be disciplined if you, if you doubt them. You can't doubt because doubt leads to discipline. But the third thing that this text blessed me with, with the revelation concerning the promises of God is this, and I'm finished, that God will definitely deliver. Look, look, look at the text that the Bible says that after Zechariah got this word from the Lord. The Bible says, verse 23, it came to pass as soon as the days of his menstruation were, were completed, he departed to his own house. And verse 24 says, after those days, his wife Elizabeth got pregnant. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're too spiritual. I need to say it one more time. Um, he goes to church in verse 23. And he gets this word in faith that Elizabeth shall have a baby. He leaves church. Verse 23. He goes home. That's verse 24. And after those days, Elizabeth got pregnant. Okay, I'm trying one more time. Let me give you another scripture. Faith without works is dead. Okay. Now that being said, he goes to church. He gets faith. He goes home and go to work. Okay, 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 okay. Y'all ain't feeling me. Okay, okay. ZQ, I'm getting ready to help him. He can't talk because he's been disciplined based on doubt. But he has faith. But he has to go to work. So, so, so he goes home. He, he go, he, he go, yeah. He, he goes home. Comes home and, and he sees Elizabeth. And he can't talk with his lips. But he looks at her. And as he looks at her, his, his look sets the atmosphere for music to start playing. And his look says, I've been really 
trying to hold back this feeling for so long. But Lizzie, if you feel, girl, like I feel. He goes home, he goes home, he goes home. I'm in the text. He... I promise you, I'm in the text. He, 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 he goes home. He... I promise you, I'm in the text. I, I know it don't seem like it, but I promise you, I'm in the text. He, he goes home, he goes home. I, Kenny, I promise you, I'm in the text. He, he, he goes home. And, and they, and, and, and the Bible says she gets, she gets pregnant. He, he still, he still can't talk. I'm almost finished. Nine months go by. Come on, come back. Nine months go by. He still can't. But the Bible says in verse 58, flip the Bible to verse 58, that when Elizabeth full time came, that she should be delivered, she has the baby. So God definitely delivered. Gwen, he, he, he definitely comes through on the promise because verse 57 says, and she brought forth a son. However, at this time, I'm almost finished, Zachariah still can't talk. Neighbors and friends, cousins come over to the house and they see, verse 58, the great mercy that was shown and they start rejoicing. And because they're Jews and on the Jewish custom, it says on the eighth day, two things happen. First of all, the boys are circumcised and they receive their name. So here it is. On the eighth day, the baby is circumcised. And Arnett, they're getting ready to name the baby. And, and, and Zach still can't talk. So... The neighbors want to name him ZJ. Yeah. That's what text says. Yeah, right, verse 59. They want to call him the name of his father, Zachariah Jr. But, but his, his mother answered because Zachariah still can't talk. And so Zachariah says, no, 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 no. His name it's going to be called John. And, and, and people are, are tripping because nobody in their family's name was, was, was John. And so now they got to get Zachariah in, involved. And what he does is uh, in sign language, he, he motioned for a writing tablet. And verse 63 says, and, and he writes the name John on on, on, on the tablet and, and everybody is surprised because uh, now th 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 this shows the unity between Zachariah and Elizabeth. He is uh, now confirming what Elizabeth said and the moment, please don't miss this, the moment uh, he confirms uh, the word uh, John that Elizabeth spoke, the Bible says in verse 64 and his mouth opened immediately. Oh gosh, you missed your chance to shout. His mouth opened immediately and his tongue became loose. Now, please don't miss this as I go to my seat. Zachariah, his tongue is loosed and now he can talk. And the first thing that he does is not address Elizabeth. He has not said a word to Elizabeth in nine months. His child has been born now for eight days. He does not turn and say a word to his son. He has family members in the house, cousins in the house, neighbors 
neighbors in the house, but he does not open his mouth and say a word to the neighbors. But the first thing, according to the text, John Zacharias does is he opens up his mouth and he begins to give God back praise. He begins to give God nine months of stored up praise. He opens up his mouth and the text says he began praising the Lord. Why he's praising? He's praising God because he now knows without a shadow of a doubt that whatever God says he is going to do, God is going to do. I need to tell somebody in this house that you need to recognize that whatever God told you he is going to do in your life it's just a matter of time before God does it and what really shouts me about the text is this when God delivers he gives you double for the trouble he does not just deliver what he promised but he will do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that you can ask or think well Pastor Jackson what do you mean well God promised Zachariah to have a son and he gave Zachariah more than just a son he gave him number one a son named John but six months later he gave him something else he gave him a savior named Jesus because at the time Elizabeth got pregnant six months later Mary got pregnant so Zachariah what do you have on the one hand I got a son named John on the other hand I got a savior named Jesus all that he promised to give me was just a son the savior was extra and I want to close by telling you this that whenever you find favor with God and whenever God manifests a promise in your life he'll give you a double I ain't got no help come here Job Job says you're right Pastor Jackson I thought I had it going on in chapter 1 I thought I had all of the cattle all of the oxen all of the silver all the children I needed until one day God decided to bless me and he added to me by subtracting from me but I was faithful to God I kept on believing I kept on praying. I kept on worshiping. I kept on believing that God was going to come through. And as a result of my faithfulness to God, in chapter number 42, he came back and gave me double for my trouble. Gosh, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I just came by to let somebody know that if God has made you a promise, it's just a matter of time. In fact, turn to your neighbor and look your neighbor in the face uh, and declare to your neighbor, tell him neighbor, uh, I believe by faith uh, that everything God told you, uh, you're going to receive it. Oh, you ain't doing it. Uh, look him in the face uh, and declare these words. Uh, tell him neighbor, uh, I believe by faith every word that God promised you shall come to pass look him in the face and tell him neighbor I believe by faith every miracle God told you you had for you you're going to receive it. oh you ain't doing it look him in the face and say neighbor I believe by faith every good work God said he had for you he's going to give it to you every good deed God has for you you shall receive it and the question is are you ready to go get it the question is if you believe I feel my help now that the promise belongs to you can you praise him like it's already yours can you bless him like what you want is on the way look your neighbor in the face for the last time and tell him neighbor God made me a promise and though it's denied it's not denied though it tarry it shall come to pass and I don't know I feel my help now who I'm talking to but I made up in my mind since God can't lie since God won't lie since his word can't come back void I made up in my mind I'm gonna praise him like his mind I'm gonna praise him like the house is mine praise him like the car is mine praise him like the promotion is mine praise him like the healing is mine praise him like the 
promotion and the raise is mine. In fact, I see in the future and I see me going higher. I see me being blessed in the city, in the field. When I come and when I go, I don't know what you see. But when I look in the mirror, I see a person that's receiving the miracle. I see a person receiving the breakthrough. I see a person receiving the manifestation. And if you can see it, put those hands together and tell the Lord, just like Mary, tell him, Lord, be it unto me. Tell him, Lord, be it unto me. Give it to me. I can't hear you. Tell him, Lord, give it to me. Give it to me. Give me my marriage. Give me my health. Give me my mind. Give me my children. Give me my wealth. Give me my heart. Give me my harvest. Give it to me. Oh, you ain't doing it. I guess you don't want it. Lift up your voice and repeat after me. Say, God, give it to me. God. service to get to but if I don't make it to that service I want to let the Lord know I'm still waiting for you to come through I'm still praying for you to come through I'm still looking for you to come through I'm still watching for you to come through and I feel in my spirit I'm trying to quit, y'all. I, I promise I'm trying to quit. But I feel in my spirit there's those like me who's been waiting for God to do something special. And you're this close to throwing in the towel. You're this close to giving up. But God sent me here to let you know that your breakthrough is one praise away. Your breakthrough is one shout away. Your breakthrough is one dance away. Your breakthrough is one prayer away. If you can press your way, push your way. Oh, you ain't doing it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, give me some room. I'ma press my way. Say, slide over something. I'm going to press my way. I want to be blessed. 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 Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's somebody who came on the verge of giving up. Getting tired of waiting for the Lord to come through. Come meet me at the altar. I, prom I was trying to get y'all out of here. If there's somebody, if you got to go, go ahead and go. I know I held you too long. Um, but, but, come on. Don't mind waiting. Don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I 
Don't mind waiting. Don't mind waiting. Don't mind waiting. Hold you, Lord. Don't mind waiting. Oh, don't mind waiting. Don't mind waiting. Hold you oh. Don't mind waiting. Don't mind way. Oh yeah. Don't mind wait. Oh you know. I know you've been waiting a long time, but Thomas ain't come through. But I don't mind way. Don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Hold you long. I don't mind waiting. Don't. Soft. I just want to just say this one more time. Shh. Say it one more time. Gail and Ali and those of you at this altar, Gloria, Spinard, and all you. Here's the message. When God makes a promise, sometimes it don't come through when you want it to. Man, in Zachariah's case, he was waiting at least 20, 30 years. But it teaches us that delays don't mean denial. But it also teaches us that you can't doubt because doubt leads to discipline. If you doubt him, it, it, it robs you of stuff you can have. Baby, you can't doubt. So when God tells you, you're gonna have your own business and you ain't got no money, you can't doubt God. When God tells you you're going to have your own house and you ain't got credit, you can't doubt God. God don't need credit to give you a house. So when God tells you, I'm going to heal your body and you're still bleeding all the time, still have cramps all the time, still hurting all the time, st still can't function all the time, listen. Your x-ray don't dictate to God. Because the one thing about God's promise is that he will definitely deliver. God is going to come through. Because when God makes a promise, you can count on it. God makes a promise. You can bank on it. When God makes a promise, it's a done deal. God, our Father, I pray for these, your children. I pray, God, right now for those at this altar. God, I pray for those under the sound of my voice. I, I pray now that you would manifest your promises. I, I pray, God, in your name that you would keep them holding on to your word, holding on to your promise. I, 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 I pray now, God, in your name, that you would help them not to waver. Help them, oh God, to believe that if you said it, you're going to do it. And I ask this now.
Jesus' name. And the church said amen. While you're standing, please hear, please hear me. There are many of you at this altar who are not connected to this ministry or no other ministry. Some of you I know that you are, but I'm looking at many of you who are at the altar. You're not connected. And there are those in the audience, you're not connected. As I was leaving the 9 o'clock service, listen to this. There were people in the overflow, and I was walking by, and the Spirit stopped me. And I turned, and I started talking to the people in the overflow. And there was a couple people there, and I was talking to them. And one man said he wasn't ready. And I said, the problem with that is that your life can change overnight. There's a young man in Jacksonville, a football player, prime of his life. Left practice earlier that week, that day, and went out to a club, sitting in his car, and got shot 14 times. Paralyzed, never walk again, one leg amputated. His life never be the same. Because as the hymn writer says, life is filled with swift transition. The point of the matter is this. You don't have time. You need, you need the church home. You need the relationship. After making that appeal, a young lady took me by my hand and I walked her from the overflow room down to the altar. Because the bottom line is you need to have a relationship. Listen, 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 listen. Pastor, do I need to join the church to go to heaven? No. Pastor, do I need to join the church to be saved? No. But you need to be a part of the church for fellowship, a part of the church that God can speak directly to you through his mouthpiece, through his servant. You need to come to church so when you read this word like today, you'll read it and just read the words. But you'll come to church and let somebody that God has given revelation of the words to read it and share it to you. And now you'll never read that text the same way again. And you need a place where you can come and the preacher can stand and give you a word that fits your situation in this season of your life. If you don't have a church home, if you don't have a pastor, I want to be your pastor. Listen, listen, we're not perfect. Our church, the Bible says in every great house, there are different kinds of vessels. In our church, we have every kind of vessel. And every vessel is welcome. No vessel is thrown out. Nobody is criticized. We don't condemn, but we don't condone. All of us come to church as sinners, saved by grace, needing a word from the Lord. So don't think that you ain't qualified. Don't think, don't, don't, don't think. I, I talk to people, listen, listen, I, this may sound funny. I talk to people, talk to a young man, and he said, Pastor, I struggle with my sexuality. I, I, I don't want to come because I'm struggling with my sexuality. I said, listen, bro, we have homosexuals, heterosexuals, bisexuals, transsexual, and some trisexuals. Yeah, try anything. Yeah, that's trisexual. We got everything. But guess what? God looks at us as children coming before a just God. You come as you are. And God will deal with your issue. Y'all ain't feeling me. Everybody is welcome. I want to serve notice on our officers, our ushers, our members, our leadership. No one will be discriminated against. All of us have issues. Help me say, all of us got problems. There's no big sin. There's no little sin. It's just sin. So the sinner who's a homosexual is as guilty as the sinner who's not tithing. Gosh, I done said something. I done said something. I done said something. And so here it is, my brothers and sisters. If you don't have a church home, I want to be your pastor. Stay at the altar or meet me at the altar and everyone else can go back to your seat. Come on, stay at the altar and come to the altar. Come on, baby. Come on. Encourage your neighbor when they're staying. Come on. Come this way. Don't let the devil change your mind. Come over this way. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Are there others? Come on. Come on. Come on. Pastor, come. 